Am I smizing yet? Hey there, welcome back to Amy TV. I'm very excited. Today we are reviewing the first book of the official Amy TV book club. If you've been around for a little while, you know that I announced this book club about a month ago. I posted my selection to my Instagram account as well as my YouTube community tab so that you guys could read it with me so that we could sit here today and kind of powwow about it as if we were at a real book club party. Okay, where's my mimosa? That's all we're missing at this point. So the book for this month was Perfect is Boring by Tyra Banks and her mom, Carolyn, who co-wrote the book with her. I thought this was a really fun selection. Um, I know that I got a little bit of like, why did you pick that as the first book? But I personally believe it is so exciting for someone who has accomplished anything, much less as much as Tyra has, to sit down and write down everything that they went through and all the steps that they took and all the challenges that they had. I think that's an, an amazing thing for somebody to be able to absorb. And so I really think anyone's experience toward going after the life that they want is worth reading, and so I thought this was a really good choice. A pretty fun read, too. It was relatively fast, and I'm hoping that you thought the same thing if you jumped in on book club this month. So in this video, I'm gonna share some of my takeaways from this extremely motivating book by an absolutely fabulous, accomplished woman, and I would love to hear some of your thoughts on it as well in the comments. So keep in mind that this is a flowing conversation conversation and that that is why I'm here to start that conversation with you. Before we get into my review, I want to remind you that it's important that you do subscribe on this YouTube channel and follow on Instagram. If you're interested in book club or any of my videos, really, I'm going to be always announcing the book that we're reading on Instagram stories and my YouTube community feed so that you're always able to read with me. I prefer that instead of just me going, hey, I read a book. You should hear about it. I think it's more fun if we do it together. So stay tuned for that in both of those places. Okay, so I'm going to get into my review. But first, I want to remind you of a video that I did recently called How I Read a Book. Sounds so silly, right? Like, why did I make a video called How to Read a Book? There was actually a good reason. And it's because when I do pick something up that I want to learn from, I sort of have these phases of how I read the book over time. So there's the reading phase, there's the download phase, and there's the execution phase. For the reading phase, pretty self-explanatory. I'm basically reading the book and highlighting, making notes and margins, things like that. Sometimes I'll share a tweetable on Twitter just if I'm feeling motivated in that moment moment, but then I want to pick up from the download phase forward for the purpose of this review. The download phase is where I go back to all of those highlights and notes and revisit them. I rewrite them and I start to come to conclusions about what these things taught me. So let's pick it up there. First and foremost, if you don't know who Tyra Banks is, then like, oh my gosh, I don't have enough time to explain that. But she's a very accomplished model and businesswoman and she has just done so many things, not just for the modeling industry, but for women, specifically women of color in that industry and in a lot of other industries. So I think she's just absolutely a woman to watch in every way. She is, she's incredible. If you want any detail on Tyra's career and life, you can really find it in this book. I thought it was very well broken down between Tyra and her mom. They literally go back and forth like they're in the middle of a conversation. I thought that was super cool. I don't think I've actually seen it done like that in very many books that I've read. So it's interesting, right? You know, if you're talking about somebody who got started at such a young age in the modeling world, you know, in her teens, it is good to have her mom's perspective in it because sometimes I think to myself, did I make up my childhood? Sometimes I like think, okay, I don't know if that actually happened. I should probably ask my mom. So the cool thing is that Carolyn was able to bring a lot of interesting insight here, specifically when they talk about when Tyra started getting success right away and the agents not wanting to tell her so that she still kept doing what she was doing and not getting too comfortable. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So if you want to kind of get those details, you've got to read the book. But here's sort of what I took away from it. The first thing that really resonated with me was the fact that she was choosing to go to Paris to model at a time when she wasn't even sure that this was a thing part time in her life. It was very sort of flippant, her modeling career at that point when someone proposed to her, hey, we want you to come to Paris to kind of try this modeling thing seriously because we think you have potential. The thing that was so fascinating to me about that was it was not the plan and she just decided to do it, but she didn't just decide to do it. It wasn't like, okay, I'll go give it a shot. I mean, that was absolutely the mentality to sort of 
feel okay about it in your brain, right? It's like, okay, I'll try it. And if it doesn't work, that's okay. I'll go back to my plan A. I've totally been there. But it wasn't just that. It was like, I'm choosing Paris. And if you're choosing Paris, you are absolutely going all in. And I loved Carolyn's perspective on this because she was like, okay, listen, you're not going to go to college. You're going to go model. That's fine. If you're going to listen to this person who's saying you're going to be amazing at it, cool. But you don't just get to go and trip your way through it. Not literally trip your way through it. Hopefully she's not tripping her way through it. But like, you're not just going to go and let it happen to you. You're going to go with the full intention of I'm going to be the best version of success possible going into this situation that I don't know what's going to happen. And end of story. This whole preparation thing was really fascinating to me because especially at a time when Tyra was coming up in the world, there were no smartphones, the internet wasn't a thing. She's going to the library to learn how to be a model. Like, I mean, if you really break that down, that's like, wow, you really had to try. You had to work very hard to learn. And these days, we don't even have that problem. If you wanted to decide, okay, today I've decided I'm going to be an orthodontist. Like, you could literally just look up every step that there is to potentially doing that. I mean, of course you can always talk to schools. I mean, that's kind of an extreme example, but you can find anything you want in a pocket size computer. You know, she had to go and really do that research, watching tapes back, like real tapes. There's no just like press of a button to start over, right? You got to rewind. She did a lot of preparation, a lot of homework. One of the biggest things I thought that was just so so, I don't know why this never occurred to me, right? Like, she, as she's doing this research, as she's doing this preparation, she's watching a lot of models do their job, and they all walk for a living, essentially. I mean, like, that's kind of a, a crappy way to put it. This is like a non-models perspective. I mean, did you know I wasn't a model? Just so we can catch up. I'm not a model, so this is a non-models perspective. <laughs> they walk for a living, right? So they came to the conclusion, Carolyn and Tyra, that Tyra needed to have a signature walk before she went to Paris. Like, the fact, like, what? That's so crazy, because if you think, okay, I'm going to dive into something I've never really taken that seriously. I'm going to try as hard as I can to be the best version of myself and hopefully become some sort of success and learn if it's right for me. But now I'm going to do something that's going to define me in that industry before I go into it. That's the epitome of knowing who you are before you start something, before you let other sources come in and teach you things and tell you things and manipulate you a little bit and, and do things to change you. You're going in knowing who you are, just something as small as having a signature walk before it even happens and letting that world impact how you do it. You're deciding how you're gonna do it instead. I think that that is so interesting and that's one of the biggest takeaways that I got from this was, oh my God, I never would have gone and had a signature walk before. I would be afraid that I'd go there, have my signature walk and it'd be terrible. Like no matter how much research I did, I would wanna wait to go in front of it, you know, professionals who could tell me like, you're on the right track, you know? you know, maybe pick up your heels a little bit, you know, <laughs> like I could, I just thought that was really fascinating. And that is the conclusion I drew. Know who you are before you let yourself get into a situation that you don't really know who you're going to be in. And as you start to shape all of those things together in this compromise of your new brand moving into this world, I just think it's so cool just thinking, I've got that part locked up. I know who I am in that capacity, and that's going to be one of my differentiators. Going into something knowing your differentiator, that is one of the most missed, missed things in every industry, in every way, by a lot of you who watch maybe my content and trying to figure out what am I gonna do next, you want the world to morph you into what that's going to be instead of you knowing yourself first. So I just think that that was such a big one to take away. I loved the sort of little hints that were being dropped about traveling alone, because if you think about, I mean, and we're still talking about Tyra's early career, right? She went to Paris. Okay, she went to Paris. She went to Paris alone. She's in the back of the plane, she goes to Paris by herself, and she's by herself, an American, traveling internationally. Now at that point in time, probably not as crazy as it is at this point in time, which is so, so sad, but also so good for her because all she needed was a crazy lunatic walk to save herself. I loved that. I was thinking, oh my gosh, I need to come up with my crazy lunatic walk when I'm walking alone in some European street and there are people watching me thinking, are we going to mug her or are we just gonna let her go? You know, like. 
That was so crazy funny to me. I was like, that's a really good travel tip. <laughs> I think a lot of Tyra's beginnings resonated with me the most because I thought about who's reading this book with me and I'm thinking of you, right? So one thing was Tyra getting started meant she needed photos of herself. She needed to have a portfolio. And what did she do? Her mom was her photographer. That is such a testament to just getting started with what you have in the here and now. Not enough of us are doing that. We're always overthinking what more can we do? Where can we get it from? Who can we hire? How can we outsource it? Just like pull out your darn smartphone and take your headshot. I mean, it's going to take like 8 million tries, but if you have it, make it happen. One of the most impactful moments I think of Tyra's career was when she was becoming a model for the front cover of Sports Illustrated. And then she did go on to become the first African-American woman to be on the front of Sports Illustrated. So that was really insane. And I think it was so cool reading her perspective about this, like, all I was doing jumping around on the beach was trying to hide my cellulite. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, you know, everyone's always like, I have all these imperfections, I've gotta hide this, I can't put this out, I can't, I don't like to have my arms out, that's a personal thing for me, like I, I just don't like it. That whole thing, we all have those things, and then there's somebody else that's like, you see imperfection and we see picture perfect, and this is literally going to be the front cover of a magazine. That is so big. That's something that is very hard for a lot of us to hear because there's no one walking up to you and saying about your uh, insecurities like oh by the way I love that I love that about you you know we of course would love to hear that from someone but women often will just go oh my god whatever they're terrible don't even say that you're joking are you joking did someone put you up to this oh my god no oh my god uh. maybe just maybe we're our biggest critics we need to just let it go accept the compliment and move on because it could turn out to be a Amazing. I think the last big one, and, and this is a big one, especially if maybe you've gotten started and you're like, oh, I'm kind of plateauing or I'm doing this and it's okay or I'm actually doing really well, so I think I'm just gonna hang for a little bit, was just the concept of not getting comfortable. Tyra came out of the gate booking 25 shows in a season and they didn't tell her that she was doing amazing because they wanted to make sure she kept booking stuff, right? And kept doing what she was doing and kept trying really hard because everybody else was lucky to book three and she just came into the industry just 25. But then she did go on and have a phase of failure that happened pretty soon after all of that, right? She started to gain weight or whatever. Gaining weight in her world, you know, especially back then, was even worse than it is today when it comes to gaining weight and how judged you are for it as a model. But that phase of time, she, she got comfortable and she wasn't doing the same things that she was doing initially and she had a ton of failure. All of those lines or all of those brands um, and all of those designers didn't want to work with her anymore after they loved working with her in the first place. So I think that's such a big testament to not getting comfortable. You can't get comfortable. This world changes constantly. It doesn't matter what industry you're in. You can sit there and say your industry has been the same forever, but you're probably also the same people ignoring social media media then because it's changed everything, right? Everything changes. You cannot get comfortable. And that's why I'm always thinking, how can I keep getting better at what I'm doing all the time? Because it's not even about the competition of others. It's the competition of myself. I'm always trying to upload a better video after the one before it. Every single one gets better and better and better and better if I have any, any choice whatsoever. If you get comfortable, if you think, oh, I'm just going to chill, I'm just going to relax, it's fine. We're growing. It's good. I'm just going to coast for a bit. That is where things start to dry up. That's where things start to change. And then you are in the back of the pack. You don't have to compete with others to realize there's somebody more hungry that could take your place. Compete with yourself so much that that person never ever has a chance. So that's sort of like my download of the book. In terms of this next step, the execution phase of uh, Perfect is Boring for me, it was that one big first takeaway. This is what I plan to do differently now that I have read this book and going forward in my life what I am going to do differently. I make a lot of plans. I'm a planner, I love to plan. I could sit around and plan all day and not do anything. <laughs> like, well that's really, really, really uneventful because if you do nothing, nothing gets done. You can plan, plan, plan all you want. She made a plan and then something showed up and said to her, hey, there's this other major opportunity for you that could be pretty awesome and it is right in front of you and if you want it, you have to take it 
right now. Like literally she had to take it right then. And in a lot of our cases, when these things happen, you got to take it right then because it's a here and now thing. You know, for her, it was like age and beauty and skinniness like that were a factor and like, you got to do it now or things are going to change, right? Anything can happen. And when we get these opportunities and we're like, wow, like this could be huge. This could be a big thing for me. But I had this other plan. Like, what am I going to do? Just go with the new shiny thing that came. The fact that she went with the somewhat new and shiny thing, it may not have been super new, but it was pretty new and shiny. Instead of the tried and true planned thing, that resonated with me so much because she didn't just decide, I have to try. She said, I have to try and I have to try harder than I've tried anything in my life. And she, like I said, did all that research. She prepped herself. She was going in there the best in her class. She really took it seriously. My actionable from that is, you know, don't be afraid of the new and shiny thing. The plans are great, but the new and shiny thing if it is massaged and made into the right thing and worked on and nurtured and, and respected, it could be massive. But you have to make that decision so intentionally. So that's what resonated with me. That was my action item. I wanted to hear from you what you thought after reading this book. And so I asked some of you to send me a video of what your execution item is going to be. What is the action you're going to take to go after the life that you want as a result of reading Perfect is Boring by Tyra Banks? And here's what you said. I think I will love myself more. I am now actually, even with the braces, and the teeth that are not, you know, the way I would like them to be, but, but they will be very soon. I know this, yes. It's to stop being embarrassed about the things that I don't like about myself. I'm going to share more imperfections in my planner spreads and in my life because I don't want people to think that my life or my planners are perfect. I want to take away like the smoke in the mirrors. Oh, and I also bought age-appropriate body books for my teens and preteens. As a result of reading Tyra's book, I am now going to ask more questions, observe everyone and everything. I'm going to take more responsibility for myself. I think the first thing that I'm going to do as a result of this book is to change the way that I actually define success. Throughout the book, Tyra talks about how when she found her greatest success, it actually came on the heels of something that no one else had told her was possible. She came up with it on her own. Oftentimes, a lot of us actually go through life finding and making our goals based on what other people are doing. And it's probably part of the reason that we're not actually achieving anything. It's because they're not actually our goals. So I think what I'm gonna start doing today is reevaluating, resetting, and striving for my own goals, not somebody else's. Your question of the day is, can you think of a time when the unexpected showed up and you had to make a tough decision? What did that look like and what did you end up deciding to do? Do you regret it? Are you excited about it? Share in the comments below. If you would like to pick up your copy of Perfect is Boring, the links to that are in the description below. It's of course on Amazon, hard copy, audible, all that kind of fun stuff. So check that out below. That is all for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it as always. Make sure you subscribe for good vibes and remember to continue to go after the life that you want. Cheers.